our students welcome back to another video and for those of you that may be this is your first time seeing this video on my channel my name is Brian Proctor aka Brian Proctor the art teacher and why do I say that because I teach you how to draw okay I just don't show you these pretty pictures let me draw Captain America or Wolverine or Batman I show you you pointing at the camera showing you how to draw because if you're an artist, you're going to want to be able to draw your own stuff one day, not just continue to copy somebody else's stuff. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do that. These, this is the first steps because I taught myself how to draw and I taught myself, how can I say this? Not the easiest way possible because I teach you guys the easiest way possible. I keep pointing at the my laptop, which is right there in front of me. Pull my hand back. My laptop is right here in front of me, so I'm seeing everything I'm doing. You guys are up there. So <laughs> I teach you guys how to draw the easiest way possible because I taught myself how to draw and it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. I'm telling you, it's like learning Spanish by yourself, just you in the house trying to learn Spanish. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the three shapes that you use to get started when you're drawing the anatomy, especially male anatomy. You know, I'm going to do more female anatomy. But, you know, YouTube, is, they, they like to trip over that. But you draw naked women. So, but I'm going to eventually start doing more and more females. But I know in the beginning, people like to draw male because they like to draw the big muscles and the superheroes. So this is why I do more men than females. And if this little light right here starts to get to me, I'm going to close my blinds, close my curtains. So, all right. If you're an artist, comic book artist, and maybe you want to do... Um, what do you call that? Uh, character designs or something like that. You're going to want to start learning how to draw stuff yourself eventually. So three steps. I was going to say something. It was something else coming into that, but I forgot what I was going to say. So let's get started with this. Your three three shapes you're going to use. You want to use your torso shapes. That that that, that uh, I'm reaching for my guy here. That um, that is the start of everything. This this and this. These three parts of the body. You want to do that first. Don't do the head first. I don't care what what master teacher said that or whatever. Don't do the head first because I can do this head and make it nice. And I want to get down to the feet and it goes off at the knees. These three shapes, this portion will allow you to see how big your drawing is on the paper so you can judge where those feet are going to go. It may take a minute, but if you just do that, I promise you, your feet will always be on the page. And then you just leave room for the head. The head is not going anywhere. It's not that big. So let's get started with the three shapes. So, and new people always ask me, where did you get this? They don't make these anymore. You get the knockoffs from Amazon, but please don't buy the knockoffs because they fall apart. So yeah, this was an import. This is a Japanese import. They don't make them anymore. They're just fake companies make the knockoffs. All right, so three shapes, three shapes, the oval. And whenever I look at the body, or looked at the body, I tried to break each part of the body down to its simplest shape. I'll grab my book in a minute. I, you know, I don't want to say I hate grabbing my book, but I don't want to keep like shoving it down people's throats. But there's some good stuff in that book. So you have your oval, you have your waist, which is just this shape, and you have your hips, which is this shape, upside down house shape, as I call it. It's easier for people to draw a shape that does not scare them. So if I said to draw, what, well, I don't know, let me grab my mouse. If I grab my mouse, you'd say, oh, there's too much detail. I can't draw this. Especially if I say draw something under the bottom, you look at the words and the lines and so forth. But if you took one shape at a time, drew the closest shape to this, and then start chipping away, just like a sculptor chip away until you get that right shape, then it makes it a little easier. So I always looked at something each piece I broke it down piece by piece and found out what shape it was the closest shape to and then I did that connected it and it comes out right so my first thing that I had to learn was to do the torso this part right here this oval here because that's your rib cage your rib cage is shaped like this you got your ribs here and your I don't know I thought it was just sternum or something I'm not sure what that's called but it's right here and you have your ribs so I do the oval, I do the whole thing, and then I draw this piece right here, which I call the mountain or the tunnel. I haven't really figured out which one yet, but every piece I've named, pretty much. So you do this, and 
as I said, I have not taught the um, torso in a while, and I need to because, need to get back on teaching that because that is the most essential shape. Because I've found lines to draw this that will, if you do it every time first, your drawing will always come out right. You well, your chest will anyway. So, drawing your torso is the oval center line, a T or cross for your collarbone, your mountain or your U shape, that's your stomach, and your chest is right above this. So if you think about like a telephone pole with the wires, or I was gonna say an I, but the, yeah, again, what is that? the letter I? Yeah, the letter I goes like that, you didn't see that. The I, am I looking right? Yeah, and then at this point where this curves around and hits this point, and where this curves around and hit this point, draw a line, go through there and that's basically tells you where your body starts to turn at using this little guy again from here to here is where the, the stomach is you you start to turn your chest starts to turn it's not flat anymore and then it starts to round out right at this line so if you draw this first every time you draw something you will always get that top part right so at this point here the bottom of your chest, we curve that up, we curve that up, and that's going to go right to your delts. Your delts are these right here, the top parts of your arm, your delts. So you see how the chest comes up here and goes right up into that? And that's the one thing about toys that um, they haven't really mastered yet because there, there are certain parts of the body that moves and you can't really simulate that correctly with a toy. Let me get the big guy. And I'll show you a little closer. All right, so this is the big guy. This is what I call the big guy because he's bigger than the rest. And for you who've been there for a long time, you've seen this guy a number of times. So you see how the chest goes right up into that delt, and that delt curves down. So when you lift your arm up, this is all connected. So it's going to pull that chest. It's going to pull that chest up with that arm. So toys have not really been able to simulate it yet. This is probably the closest thing that I have found to great muscle structure and great movement, but the skeleton underneath this thing is a metal skeleton underneath this thing, and sometimes it locks up or it won't go back into place like the shoulders. I think even now one shoulder is higher than the other. It does that. You see how this shoulder can drop down like that to kind of mimic uh, motion, but sometimes that shoulder will not go back up which I'm surprised it did at this point. So you get that little bit of range of motion and then coming across the arm. So like I said, this is probably the, one of the best things that I have found. But when you raise your arm up, that chest stays the same and it's supposed to be pulling on that delt. So there's just some things that I kind of like jumped off the subject to show you. That's still available on Amazon. That particular one for you guys, first guys, it's, it's your first time seeing that. That's available on Amazon. I think $89, $98. Yeah. So, and it doesn't come with a head. It does not come with a head. So just, you have to buy a separate head. All right. So from there, I would do a V right here. And that's going to be my neck. And you attach your head here. And your arms are simple because your arms are just um, cylinders. And then you can, I don't really put the circle there. I just use that for the knee. And then I do the cone for the arm, for the lower arm, the forearm cone, because this is wider and it narrows out to here and you just chop the arm off, you chop the cone off where you want to put your hand. It's like that. The legs and arms are really the simplest thing so they can go on last because they could go anywhere. And I'm going to close these blinds because this is the light is slowly getting brighter and creeping across my page. So in one second, all right, I... I don't really like closing the curtains because it makes it a little more darker in this room. All right, so now let's let's talk about drawing. Now, once you have this, this stacks onto that, which stacks onto that. Now, depending on the angle of the drawing, let's just say you looked at a drawing and you wanted to draw it. Let's let, again. Let me get my book. All right, that's the 360 book. One of my one of my drawing books. I have like four so far, and get to the page where I'm showing you where. 
do, 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 putting the puzzle pieces together. All right, so these are the pieces that you would draw to create a body or to make a body. And it's very simple shapes. Who's afraid to draw a shape? You put these shapes together. Oh, my page is coming out. I've used this so many times. My page is coming out. Uh, when you put them all together and then just connect the dots, you have that. I'm shocked my page is coming out, which is good because I can always use it. So let's just say you want to draw something. Let me find a position. Let me see if I got one of the bigger positions. And all of these are videos, videos that I have done. And I just used the, what do you call it? I used the finished product to, for a thumbnail. I want to see if I get some, something with somebody kind of like twisted a little bit. Let's use this guy falling. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> so if you want to, anytime you look at a, a, a picture, something that you want to draw, you want to find those three shapes. Here's the one. It's like, oh, he's drawing in a book. Yeah, you can get this book because this, this is a good paper. It erases. So can you see that? Let me try blue or pencil. You have the one shape right here. Maybe get darker. The other shape is going to be right here. And the house is going to be here. Now, the only thing is when you turn your character, then you're going to have to know what those shapes look like when you turn them, when you twist them, when you bend them. That's the only hard part. Hard part. This this is an oval, so an oval, no matter how you turn it, it's going to be the same. You just change where your lines are. This is flat, like a hockey puck. I call it the tuna can. So if I tilted it forward a little bit, I, and I said I was going to get a shape. I can't think of really of a shape. Uh, that might be, I used a tuna can when I used it. This is like this. That's all it is. So when you tilt it all the way down, it's going to be a circle. All the way up, it's just going to be a circle. But you won't see that because this oval is going to be sitting on top of that shape. You won't see this because all three of those, these two will be sitting on top of that, so it'll be unseen. So that's probably the most simplest shape. No, this is the most simplest shape to do. You just have to add your lines, this, and then the upside down house. So you have to add your um, center line or direction line. All right, so this, since the body is somewhat round, it's not really round, it's more of an oval shape. When you get on top of it, it's more kind of shaped like that. So since this is more of this oval shape, it's going to do the same thing as this, except you have this triangle or V that comes down. Put your center line here. Now, this and this are going to be the openings for your legs right here and right here. You have to leave room for the crotch for the man junk. So when you turn that up, it's still going to be oval. You're going to have your room for your man junk, and you're going to have your holes for your legs. So my leg is going to be here and here coming down. It's going to be like that. So once you master that, then it becomes simple to draw. And just look for that in every drawing you might see. Look for those three shapes, and then you are good to go. So... Turning it to the side, I'm, I'm going to focus on this a little bit more. Turning it to the side, you're just moving it to the side. Again, you're going to have your collarbone, which is in the T of that cross. You're going to have that stomach, that mountain. If you, if, you, if you are having a hard time judging that, make a V. That way you have more over here and less over there, which is the proper way to do it. Let's see if I turn this off. There's a lot of glare. And that other light is coming from that other window. It's the glare from the book. You're still going to have just below, just below your chest. I'll use this guy. Just below your chest or above your chest, above this mountain sits your chest. Even with the big guy. You see that? This is the bottom of the chest. And this is where that, that mountain or that tunnel is going to come in. So you don't want to have it like your chest way up here. You want to have it just above that. So go straight across like that. And remember what I say, when, you, when you're doing this circle, when it hits this line, you're going to bring a line. It's going to have just as much curve as your end line from this point to that point. When this circle hits this, you're going to have that curve 
it curves around like that. Then remember when it hits this line, if your chest line hits that, that's when it curves up. So you're always going to have your delts are going to hang right off of those lines right here. So at this point, it's going to curve up and then your delt is going to be like this. Your delt is kind of shaped like a, what do you call that? I don't know, guitar pick, uh, water drop upside down. And it's comprised of three heads. You have your front, your middle, and your rear delt. Yeah, almost forgot it. So it's like that. And they sit right there. Your collarbone kind of it sits right off your collarbone. And at the bottom of that, your arm comes from there. This point is where your bicep and tricep will um, separate. And there's another muscle, actually another muscle here that actually goes right into this part of the arm there. It comes out here and it forms this muscle right. Turn it a little bit. It forms this muscle right here. And that's why I drew on this because I wanted <clears throat> I wanted you to be able to see the muscles, how the muscles go. <clears throat> so we have that. We have this. So your chest is curving now like that, curving up into that delt. This one's going to come down and curve like that and then go into that delt a little bit somewhere. And then your arm. So your, your delt is almost as low as your chest because so, I used to make them really short, like small like that. And then I have my arm in it. There's always something I couldn't really see, but just kind of make it almost the length of your your um <clears throat> your chest. Yeah. So this you curve it around. It could be flat going down. It could curve going down. It could be a point going down. Everybody's body is different. For me, I will do this. Let me get a little pin. I do. I put a little W. Was that an M? That's an M. And then curve mine down like that but that's just me then from there you would go back here get back here you would put that where your waist is that's just that that oval shape let's see if i can get a blue blue here it's bad when your drawing table is at a slant and you have so much stuff on that drawing table your blue here and then you have go back to red you have since this is this is um center line you have your red house so the, wherever this top line the center line is that's going to be the roof of your house and you go over like that and you already have the workings of i'm looking for my pen i ended up buying a new pen because i'm doing a lot of inking because i'm doing my next comic book idea i'm going to i'm going to crowdfund it so show some love whenever i get it finished so that uh yeah i can just do this and put out more videos and i got i have to get used to it i have to get used to this pen but it is a refillable pen because i didn't want to dip pen and you start and your lines start getting good and you have to redip it because every time you put it down you got to get it to where that line is smooth again with, with this one it just doesn't run out for a while and if it does you just change the cartridge or you can has got another one where you can actually suck up suck the ink up into it and it yeah so anyway you have your body already and there's my delt there's my delt here's my collarbone collarbone my shoulders and you see this what's left of this circle i'm going to put this v here the v is in the center line the center is going to be that v and then that's going to be my neck and what's left of this this circle here I'm going to make that a little bigger depending on the musculature of the person and then you have that body you have the body i mean it's done you can add the abs that's a whole nother story and then the arms and the legs you see how the arms and the legs are just 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 a cylinder it's cone cylinder cone same with the legs the legs are the same thing i'm going off the page here but let's just say i wasn't going off the page and um so here's my head which i don't have a head so if i did this this would fit on the page but i don't have a head so the head only takes up so much room you can't see that the head only takes up so much room so that's why i say don't draw that head first because that head is just such a small thing for that body so you're going to have your room remember you're going to have your room for your for your uh man junk and then your legs i'm going to draw this really small so to fit so you have that oval you have the circle for the knee and then you have that cone again for the foot, the lower part of the leg, and the foot is just a triangle, triangle like that. So again, let's just, let's just draw the 
and just make it smaller. So this is going to be my, my leg. So that's just an oval. Going into there, you don't see that. And I have my knee and I have my triangle like that. So I'll put my calf here and I'll cut it off. The same way I cut this off at the wrist, I'll cut it off and I'll put my foot here. And the foot, you see, that's just half of a triangle. So if you guys are having trouble drawing feet, let's just put it there. I don't know why I didn't just use this one instead of this little short thing. Because <laughs> I'm crazy. Here's my circle. Here's calf. Uh, leg. So if I'm going to do a foot, I'm going to draw this triangle first, okay? I'm going to go back to red since you guys can see red a little better. And I'm going to close this other curtain because this is bugging me too. The crazy part is I didn't have my overhead light on, my ceiling light. Yeah, it's weird. Okay, so here's the leg, oval. And you have to get used to how long. You don't want to make stuff too long or too short. Leg right here is my knee. Circle, oval. And then here is this part, the shin, right here. So if I do my foot, I'm going to do half a triangle. When you draw somebody, the foot on the inside is going to pretty much be flat. Let me see if these guys are any good um, uh, examples. So this comes, this leg comes down. You can almost kind of go straight. You can almost kind of go straight down when you draw, especially with women. And then this foot is going to be straight the same way. This foot comes out. So whenever you're drawing, this is, it might be the same way. The big guy, same way. Get your own camera. Point the foot right. You see how flat that is? It's flat. And this part comes out. So if you look at that as a triangle, then you turn it into a wedge by just putting a line straight down here. Wedge as in like a door stopper or a slice of cake. So if you put the other part of that line, the foot right down here, then you have a good foot direction. And you can bring this up and then the heel because your foot is, you, you have in your foot, you have this little, I forgot what, what that's called. In your foot oh it's not the ball of your foot I forgot what it's called so yeah you're gonna have that so if that's too short then you just bring that out a little bit more bring that out a little bit more and then in you can bring it up you don't always have to have this piece up and then you just curve it for um, the heel and then just curve that around instead of making that like straight like that curve it curve it and then you have a foot so however you, you put that wedge, if I put that wedge like this, just half a triangle, and this is half a triangle, here's the other half of the triangle. So if I just put that like that, and I can just put a little bit there, and then maybe the heel back here, not too much, curve it around. I am angling my foot to where you can, where it's, where it's almost pointed to the front. So this is my heel, this is my foot, like that, and it goes up. <clears throat> And then sometimes you want to put that that little bend to show you know where the foot bends at. <clears throat> I don't know what's wrong with my voice right now. You don't want this all the way up. You just want to like kind of a little bit like that. And then there you go, flatten that out, curve that around a little bit more. And then you have a front <clears throat> a front facing foot. Probably because I was eating Doritos before I did this. So easy, simple shapes to help you um, draw something you just you just have to mind your turn as long as you have these lines in place no matter how you turn or twist that person it's always going to work out so let me do a quick drawing and i will show you and something i have and i'll put a link to that um all my um action pose drawings and in each drawing you just kind of like follow the steps and I also have some on TikTok, which is quicker, but follow the steps. There's no words. There's no words to go to it. All right. So like, let's just say I'm going to do a position and there is no reason that you can't use somebody else's position because there's no, no copyright on that. One guy asked me, could I use you? He had the book and he's like, can I use that and turn it into my character? And I was like, that's the reason I did the book. So number one, you can learn how to draw and you can use these um, positions and dress your character up. I tell people to 
stop drawing Batman and Superman so much and come up with your own type of character. Come up with your own character. You know, if you love Batman that much, come up with another character that kind of resembles Batman, but is not Batman. You know, and he could still be a billionaire. He could be a trillionaire. He could be, you know what I'm saying? So when you start drawing your own stuff, you get better at drawing it because you're so busy looking at, oh, oh I like that position, but it's not quite what I want to draw. So you draw, use this, what I'm teaching you, and start drawing. So I'm, I'm going to have this, this, turn them to the side a little bit and come down. So this is going to be my... My tunnel, my mountain, the chest is going to be here. The um, uh, collarbone is going to be here. Now, when you lift an arm up, that collarbone goes up too. If you lift that arm up, that collarbone goes up too. And remember, I said it pulls the chest. It pulls that chest because the way that arm goes, it's all connected. If the chest is going to go down, it stays that way. So if you have this line... And as I say, right here, it's gonna. This is where it's gonna turn, but it pulls. So right here, it's gonna turn right here. And then you have this coming down. You don't want to take it all the way to the edge. You kind of, kind of it. It everything kind of lines up with the chest. And that's something I had. To, I started measuring um, stuff as well, like the center of the chest. This is turned, so like the center of the chest is kind of like where stuff comes down. This is this is not going to do it. This guy is kind of close. Center of your chest, your nipple, and it comes straight down. This is where your abs were going to come down, but your abs turn in. Right where it comes down, it turns in right at your love handle, a.k.a. Um, obliques. It kind of turns in and goes in. You see how wide this is? compared to that because it sucks in because you have to have room for your obliques which this part is just the tuna can part right connected to the oval and under that you have your house upside down house if I drew on this you can see oh it is kind of a house so this one goes all the way back up it has a bikini cut short and this is like the, your hips which is going to your buttocks so if you turn you turn if you draw your character to the side just a little bit put your arm up or down or let me roll you over you're going to start seeing some of that buttocks right here. So you see how much, because that leg comes up here. The legs are, it goes, comes up. The legs come up like that, leaving their shape for that crotch. And it comes down like that. And then your buttocks are back here. And then your waist starts there. And then you have your torso up there. Hopefully you can see that it was kind of light. Somebody got on me for drawing light one time, and I didn't apologize, so I said I'm going to start drawing darker. All right, so we're going to have this. I'm going to have this person curved, going to be going kind of like in that direction-ish. So we have that. I don't want to go past this because it'll be going straight. So then I'm going to put this down, this this tuna can. You don't want to make it too, too, um, too thick, and you don't want to have it too thin. That's the opposite way. Too thin, too thick. And then from there, I'm going to have my hip. This is going to be the center. This is going to come up. This is going to be here. Not necessarily having to follow the line because your, your love handle is going to come out a little bit, which means your hip is going to come out a little bit, but you start tweaking that. You start tweaking that. Now I could bring it back a little bit more if I wanted to or not. But with this, I, the body's pretty much done. It's pretty much done. I've got the balance. I've got the turn that I want. I've got everything going. So then I can say like, okay, right here now, my stomach's going to come in and down. Right here, my stomach's going to come in and down. Like so. So the hard part is pretty much done. So I've got my arm here. And let's just say I'll put the other arm here. I think I might have drawn this position not too long ago. The brain, once you get a position in your head, the brain just kind of like, locks it in this is going to be bigger because it's going to come around to the to the lat right here i think i did do this i don't know i don't know i'm doing it again it's easy because it show i show i show you i show you guys so we have this collarbone that came up we have this other collarbone that came down since it's turned since it's rotated a little bit you see the delt both delts so when you rotate it 
this one starts to disappear because that chest go, it goes behind that chest so the more you turn it the more it disappears the more you turn this, the more this comes into the body. So you see the chest right here, because this is the way the delt is shaped, like this. So once you, it's off of the chest, and this is your chest. Your chest stops here and goes over here. So once you rotate, this is going to go right, start going to go into the chest or into that oval. Right here, that whole entire oval, and you're losing all of this over here. So just remember that. So this delt is going to be right here. I'm going to have this delt down. It's not going to be fully round. Like if this was the, put it down here. If this was the front, this is my collarbone, this is my chest, this is my stomach. So that delt is going to be round here and around there, fully round, fully round. So as I turn it, I'm not going to have that full round. It's going to get cut off. The roundness is going to get cut off. So I'm going to take that arm back a little bit. which means I'm not going to draw that hole. I'm not going to draw this whole part of the bicep tricep. I'm going to cut it off to give it that appearance of going backwards for shortening. You can also narrow it down, narrow it out. The, the more it goes back, the more it narrows out. So as I said, you have this whole one, you cut it short, and then you can have the forearm coming from there, which is the cone. And then the hand. So let me do this. Remember, this is wider than that. And then the hand. All right, so we have this. We have this oval. We have this cone. And I just chop it off right here. And I put the hand however I want to put the hand. I want to have him holding something. Now, when you draw a hand, just always remember this part of the hand is flat. This from here to here is flat. This goes out. When I was a uh, younger beginner artist, I used to draw the hand like this. I would draw every part out like that. So this is the forearm. This is how my hand was like that. And so it just, you know, I and I would always look at it and something was wrong and I couldn't really figure it out. So then I finally kind of like looked and looked and I realized, oh, this is flat. This part goes out with the, for the thumb. So whenever you draw, if you're drawing a fist or whatever, however position, just think about where is that baby finger? It's going to be flat. Makes better, makes for better drawing, <clears throat> a realistic drawing or correct drawing. So we have this like this. So I'm going to put one leg forward. And then this part is going to be down. And this is just a cone. Let me let me do, just do the extra shapes first, and then I can. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Then I can make it better, better shape. So I want to have this one going, kind of going back. So I'm going to do this cone, and I'm going to have the other half of the leg, the shin, going behind it. So I'm going to put my knee, kind of. This is where it's going to end. Get a little bit of the knee, and then. To draw something going backwards or behind, you're drawing through instead of something like that, which I always, when I was young, that was another thing. I, I didn't know how to make stuff go back in perspective. So just like, okay, I'm going to position this. Just like this, you have your full leg as it goes backwards. It's not just shorter, but it goes kind of higher up on this part of the leg. See how where this calf is? This calf is like way up here. So whenever I draw, it's like drawing the funnel. If you draw a funnel, looking down into it, here's a funnel or a cone. Funnel, funnel is different, cone. So as I tilt that cone, and I actually have a cone, you're going to start seeing the opening of it, and this is going to get a little shorter. It's going to get a little shorter. The more I tilt it, the more roundness you're going to see the shorter it's going to get until you just see the opening of it. And because this is narrow, you're not going to see it. So if I didn't want this completely looking down, I would do something like this. Just this, this is my cone like that. So you're going to do the same thing with a leg or an arm, depending on how much it's 
bent or twisted. And as I say, uh, drawing is a lot of the pins. You could see something like somebody flying and you say, oh, that's, that's a nice position, but I need it to be like that. So you would have to draw it a different way. So it depends on how you want it or how you see it or how you want the reader to see it. So if I'm going to do the leg and I'm going to have that leg bent back, I'm just going to have that circle and maybe just a little bit of the cone showing. Chop it off where the foot is and then draw the foot. Like that. So this leg is going back and bending and a lot of times they'll put this stuff in shadow to actually help you to really, really understand, oh, this part is going back because the light is going to hit here, but it's not going to hit under here. So again with the cone, cone again with the triangle, like that, half a triangle actually, half a triangle. And because ah, I had to readjust myself in my new chair, which is a posture chair, and it actually hurts the butt when you sit on it too much because it's just sloped. It doesn't have any that good butt cushion. It's <laughs> just sloped so that you can have your back standing, you know, straight. So if I wanted to make this, if I wanted to turn this foot around, which I'm not, I'll just turn it around a little bit, then I will turn it into that. I will turn it into that wedge like that. So it's really easy to, to, do, to do feet and just round it off, round it off. So if I'm going to, what? I'm going to do something. I could bring this leg. I mean, if I was going to make this perfect, I would bring this leg down because this foot is in the air. This is not touching. So this foot has to be like down here somewhere like he's stepping, but I'm not going to try to make it perfect. I'm just here to show you how to draw. And that's the whole reason I call myself the art teacher because I'm teaching you. I want you guys to learn. You know, I'm not going to live forever. But when I do go, I hope that somebody becomes a great artist and say, you know what? This guy, Brian Proctor, he taught me how to do this. And it's because of him, I am the artist I am today. That kind of is what I want because when people leave comments saying, you know, because of you, I can draw a little better. Or, or you know, when somebody said I watched uh, out of all the videos I've seen, yours was the one that taught me the most in one video. Stuff like that keeps me going. So, because a lot of times I'm like, eh, well, I want to keep doing YouTube. Um, YouTube is not really paying me thousands of dollars like some of these other channels that just teach you how to draw Captain America. Okay, I'm venting. So, <laughs> those that little bit, that just kind of helps me to keep going. And, you know, when one person says, hey, I'm learning something, that really, really, really helps me. So, yeah. All right, so what I have left, I have this little piece of the shoulder left. You can't see that. It's kind of light. This is from the, from the oval. Remember, so wherever this line comes, wherever these two points meet, right there, the two two points of the collarbone, collarbone, I, I put them in black, where they come together, this neck, you have that V, because these are the muscles, these two muscles, I don't know the name, but they go right up to behind your ear. So wherever your collarbones meet, you put that your V. Oh, wait, before you put your V, you have to have your shoulders pretty much. I mean, you can make them a little bigger or, or um, you need a, why would you make them smaller? So I always bring my, that V up to this point right here, to that curve. Now, depending on how big of a neck I want on a person. So this is, this is the torso again. Okay, this is my shoulder. Now, this is going to be the V here, right there. If I want that person and the neck is going to come up, let's, let's, let's rewind a little bit. It's going to be my V. At the top of the V, my neck is going to come up. Then I'm going to place my head. All right, so now let's jump over here. Now, if I want a wider neck, I'm going to take that V and I'm going to widen it out. Like that. Then I'll come up to give me that wider neck. And then you put that head, which is just an oval, but you put it to fit the position. Now, is, is he looking up? Is he looking down? Is he looking left? Is he looking right? And usually whenever I draw a position and I, and I throw the head on there, I'll do my oval. And I can kind of see most times, as soon as I put the oval, how I want that head to be. Because when I first put it on there, I saw him looking this way for, for whatever reason. I don't know he was looking that way. But I don't want to put it that way. It also determines how now, if I'm just putting the head on the shoulders, just regular basic 
um, what's the word? Just regular basic drawing with the head. I'll put the chin right here at that, wherever this comes at. I'll put the chin right on that line or pretty much right at that line. And then that's like the length of my neck. If he's looking down or, or, or ducking down or whatever, or he's mad or, you know, it's, it's a tilted position, then I will bring the head below that line. So I'm going to put them this way. Just because. Just because and here's my neck. So I'm going to I'm going to bring the shoulders up a little bit more, give them a little bit more shoulder, a little powerful shoulder. And let's put something in his hand. Let's put a sword in his hand. Why has it got to be a sword? Why can't it be like some chopsticks or uh uh okay, how about this? He's a giant whisk. Wisp, wisp, whisk, wisp. He's a cook. He's about to beat some eggs. He is the superhero cook. People are like, man, you just messed up the drawing. <laughs> this is this is comic books. You can have whatever you want. This is the, the egg beating um, hero of the kitchen. All right. This is why I like comic books. And then something can be. He got this right here. He's got that spoon. <laughs> so I like comic books. Here's a spoon in his hand right there. So yeah, he's in the kitchen. He's like, I'm here. And here's the, 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 the stove right there. And he's about to beat some eggs to make an omelet. All right. Gotta love comics. So I just lost all train of thought of where I was going. Um, these three shapes, I'm trying to get back online. I'll get back. I'm not there yet. These three shapes, these, this, this, and this makes for your um, character or your drawing. If you're going to tilt it, if you're going to tilt it down, instead of it being like this, this is going to be a V. The more you tilt it, I'm going to go back to my, my thing because people, people, people learn more when you um, show them reality. If I tilt it down, this becomes more of a V, a wide open V, and you see more shoulder. That's how you can tell if, it, if a character is, is tilted down. If he's tilted up enough, you won't even see this. You just see the roundness of the chest at the top. So if he's top, so if he's straight forward like that, these go straight across, straight across. So remember that. So if I tilt this guy down, <clears throat> I don't want to circle. The more you tilt down, this can be this can be used as a circle with the lats. This could be used more, I'm trying to get it perfect on camera, the lats, more of an oval shape. But as you tilt it down, it flattens out a little bit, like this shape. Remember, I said that shape. So if I'm tilting it forward, I'm going to do more of this flat shape depending on how much I tilt forward. So here's my collarbone right here, my shoulders here, on my delts, and there's gonna be my chest. Again, depends on how much you tilt that person that you're drawing, you might see some stomach, you might not. So if I tilt the, this guy like this, you, you're losing more and more and more and more of the stomach until you just see this. But the hips, because when we bend, we bend right here at the waist. Bend right here at the waist. So if he bends, you're still going to see the house, upside down house, and just a little bit of the stomach. So that depends on how much you bend your character, how wide the chest is, if it's a male or female. And this goes right up into, the chest goes right up into the delts, kind of like one seamless piece, especially when you bend over. Just think of this like a shoulder pads for football players. And like I say, if you see, doing the cone again, cone, 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 yes, it's kind of like that. <clears throat> you have this, and then you have your piece like that, doing that cone, like that. How much are you bending that cone over? So you're doing that, except you're ovaling, ovaling it out, oval it out, Brian, oval it out. This is going to be a long video, but I'm teaching you a lot of stuff. So then you have your chest, and then you might see some of the stomach. And then you erase, remember, you just like the wrist, you're erasing that part. Then you're going to put the hips. You're gonna, not going to have the hips here, you're going to have the hips back. The same way we did this. This is the part, this is the unseen part of the, the leg right here. Because you bent it back. So the hips, because this is bending in front of that hip, that hip is going to not be right here. Remember, it's going to be further up on the waist. So this can be this, this can be the waist, and then your your um, 
hips are going to be like here. So it's going to be way up kind of high on that, on your waist. I keep getting those two mixed up. So if I'm bending this cat over here, I'll just say I'm going to see the, the um, <clears throat> a little bit of the rib cage, and then it's going to be in my stomach. This is going to be the one, um, God, the, the longer I talk, the, the more I lose it. And one set of abs and the other set of abs, and I kind of keep them close together. The, the, the more I bend over, the closer I'll have the abs if I'm going to do the third set. So then instead of putting the, the waist down here, I'm going to bring the waist up here. And it's still going to be that upside down house, remembering there's room for the junk. And then I can put my legs however. If you're bending over, either you're going to bend over to pick up a quarter or something, or you're playing football. But in this case, you know, he's going to be mad. So then uh, I'll put my head, this is my neck, here's my center line. So I'll put my head down as far as I want to put it down. If you put it up, it's kind of like he's like looking, popping his head up over a fence or something. I don't know. So I want to put it down. You don't want to go below this. You want to have it, could be touching it, but you don't want to go too far. Again, it depends on the type of position you're doing. And because that head is now in front of that neck, you really won't see the neck, but because it's, it's um, comics and this is narrow and the neck is going to be wide, you're going to see just a little bit, but it's going to come right back down to this point. Remember, it's going to come down to this point and up because these, like I say, these come up behind the ear. Where is the head that I bought for this thing? Here it is. Let's put the head come back here. That thing is $110. You can't find them anymore unless you go on eBay and they milk you for it. This thing. It was $110 when I bought it. Uh, which you can sell it for more now. What is it? The head. The head. <clears throat> so the head is here. Pops on right there. So these go right up to the neck. These little veins, these actual muscles, I don't know what these go. So they go right up to the to the um, ears. So again, if, if, if this guy's straight and then I bend him down, you see how this chin is coming down and his shoulder is coming up to like the ears? So the more you bend somebody down, the more the shoulder, why, why am I bending him? Why don't I just tilt it down? <laughs> the more, the higher this back is going to go up here. All right, so... Yeah, so these shoulders are up where his ears would be right here. So the more I bend the guy down forward or lean him forward, the higher this is going to be, the less of that neck you're going to see. Unless he's got like a Hulk neck that's just raging out. And then you have your traps. These muscles here are your traps, and they actually go all the way around and down into your back. So all of this, the V in your back, your traps and then you have your delts your delts here and then it goes into that and then your head comes up your head the back of your head your neck so your traps come down like this <clears throat> and then like that and there's like a, a split between those two so all of that are your, are your traps trapezoids that's you know get into the get into the back in a whole new video so we have this bending down and then like i said you put your arms however you want to put your arms you can put your arms back now let's put one arm back and again, same as this, if you're doing a cylinder, the more the circle you see, the shorter this is going to be, <clears throat> and the more open that circle is going to be. So if I'm putting an arm back, I'm going to do that. This is, the, this is the front of that opening, and this is going back like that. The more it goes back, the more narrow it's going to be if it's a cylinder. So let me do this. And then you can either put your forearm back, which is a cone, or you can have it come down or out or whatever. And that's what I say about once you get these three pieces together, <clears throat> everything else flows. I guess my throat is trying to tell me that's enough, long enough video like that. So I can put the other one back or I can put it just straight down. It works. So that to me, that's the hardest part. It's like, okay, how do I want to put his arms or legs to make it seem like, you know, great position to make it stand out. And it also depends on what he's doing. He could have a, a stick or something, a spear like that. And I wasn't planning on putting a spear in his hand, but you know, one arm and one, one hand and one hand, I just 
put a spear in his hand. So feet are legs are apart. Um, <clears throat> these could be spread out more, or these can go straight down, depend depending on the amount of action you want. So let's use let's use the pen because I got to get used to it. It's a metal pen, and I think it was I bought some extra ink with it and some other stuff, and it was ended up to be fifty five dollars. I think about twelve little cartridges. And I'm going off the subject because this is going to be an hour video. 12 cartridges you stick in there because I took the, the one that came with it out. I wanted to use the cartridges first and then it won't stop inking. So <clears throat> I'm going to cut through the spear. Here's this, the knee, this, and then the foot, however you want to put the foot. And you can do the same way with the other one. So <clears throat> remember, and the only reason I'm shutting it down because it's 50 some minutes already. Remember, just do this oval tuna can or hockey puck for those who don't like tuna and then the upside down house because we always know how to draw a house. That's one of the first things we draw when we're young. Upside down house, have your center line, your tuna can or, or rectangle and then your thing and then you guys upside down. You guys upside down. His leg is going back in his foot like that. Yeah, he's upside down. So simple simple easy to draw consider the 360 book for those of you who don't know i started out i just wanted to draw the same position because i've not seen people do that I, I like i said sometimes you see the position that you like but you're like oh i like that position but i need them to the side so this is the, in the beginning of the book it's the same position but it's turned around so if you like to need that position and you need to see what it's like from a different angle this is what you got this is this because every position that you draw is not cool in other you know directions so this is one reason why I did that this so you have a number of positions which equate into different positions same punch different angles and then it translates into my YouTube these are and everyone is named so if you get it you like oh I like that how to draw that position drawing rip characters not example, example two, not drawing rip characters, not example two. So I was showing you about, I think this was about the muscles. A lot of people want to draw every muscle, but you don't have to have every muscle on there to make your character look good because a lot of people will get the muscles wrong. Same thing here. This is example three. So there's probably two, these are definitely two separate videos. So all of these going up here are videos that if you go to my channel and you actually hit the videos, um, something jumped up on my camera, so I'm gonna end this. Then you can you can draw this. You can follow along and draw this. Small view connection is something. So I guess my camera's getting tired of, of just sitting there. And then in the end, I've got you know show you how to do or just a couple pictures. Shows you some hands. Where did it go? It's slow, and my camera's getting real slow. So I'm gonna end this video here before it does something like cut out and I lose all my my um video i mean because this is lagging so bad all right so i'm going to end it here and i'll see you guys in the next video leave a comment tell me what you want to see and i'll try to get to it later